Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Miller, and my uh, presentation has to deal with the New Horizons spacecraft, one of APL's most ambitious missions in coordination with NASA. Uh, it's on, obviously on its way to Pluto, and for those of you who are not intimately familiar with the project as itself, New Horizons launched from Earth orbit around about 2006 on its way to what used to be our ninth planet, now a dwarf planet. Uh, altogether a successful uh, launch, and it's on its way, or was on its way, to Ju uh, Jupiter, which it arrived at a mere 16 months later in May of 2007. Tested out some of its uh, equipment and some of its uh, facilities, its capabilities of taking a look at the planet and its sensors, and continued uh, via gravity assist uh, to eight years later to arrive somewhere in uh, Pluto and Charon, uh, eight years later. I told my kids about this a little while back, and they uh, kind of scratched their heads and I said, scratched their heads and asked, what's wrong? And uh, they said, well, that doesn't make sense. Eight years. Why eight years between Jupiter and Pluto when it took 16 months to get from Earth to Jupiter? And uh, I had to think about it for a moment, and I think they're due an answer. And I thought, why do they not understand that Pluto is really, really far? And I think it's because of the perceptions that they have in some of their school books. Here's a great example. When we all grew up, Dinosaurs were these cold-blooded, lethargic things that just kind of romped around the Earth. And we, after we learned later on, uh, basically, they're not. They're warm-blooded, bloodthirsty killers. And the graphics changed over time. Well, right now, children's textbooks have these sorts of graphics which portray our solar system. It's very pretty, it's very neat, it's very well organized, it fits on a page, and it's absolutely patently false. All the planets are not this size, they are not in equal steps through the solar system. But this is what kids see. Occasionally, they'll get this sort of graphic, which shows a number of colored rings and is a much more accurate view of basically the distances involved and what New Horizons has to actually go through to get to Pluto and the outmost uh, Kuiper Belt object. After all, we're not dealing with basically the chicken crossing the road. It's not just stepping a few feet across this. We're talking about uh, hundreds of millions and tens of billions of miles to basically go just between each planet. And right now, there's a lack of a sense of scale. So how do we correct this? Most efforts to basically correct this perception is actually dealing with something like this. It's a chart with distances of the planets from our native star, Sol. It's not very engaging to people. It's not very terribly interesting. So my idea is to set up what they would call a relative distance model. And here's a great representation of it. Just some students with the foreground girl basically representing our native star, and the one over by basically the goal representing Pluto. It's very, very simple, and it's a real world example. Where can we do this? Well, we have this enormous resource which we're not really making use of, and that's our front lawn, where we can use the front gate as basically our native star, and the Kazakov Center as either Eris, now our furthest most planet out, or Pluto. The benefits of doing a real world model is it's engaging to students, and it's much, more, uh, it's much better than a two-dimensional graphic or a web page, or just giving them some sort of chart. It's a great potential for more than just a mowing headache, quite frankly. Now, for a distance model, for just a little sample, I had posted some posters with the help of a friend on Thursday night. Friday morning, I was told, no posters allowed, you can't hang anything. So on the cooler page, I have marked off some offices and some landmarks. Go take a hike. If you want a, a potential or basically an example of the impact, the National Mall has a great representation uh, stemming from the Capitol building all the way to the Red Castle, the Smithsonian. It's 2,000 feet in length, and it's in a 1 in 10 billion scale. Now that's a real expensive example, but we can do this fairly cheaply right here. We already have the land, we already have the front lawn. We can do this with some simple globes available over the internet and some posts and even some lighting and some possible posters and using simple math what we have here in Building 200. This can engage some local students. The, the front lawn actually tilts toward the road and toward the public. It can engage in staff because a lot of staff don't realize just how far it is to the outermost solar system. And when we have news crews showing up in three years' time for the countdown, we have news crews can basically explain to the public why has it taken so long for the spacecraft to leave Earth orbit and actually get to Pluto? Actually, it went to Jupiter in 2007. Why is it taking so darn long? So we've got three years to go. And at the end of three years, if we put this up, we can either dismantle the model and say, well, that was fun, that was great. But remember, New Horizons isn't stopping. It's going on into the Kuiper Belt, and the mission will continue. So we can keep this going on and beyond. Um, so that's my presentation to basically do some sort of small model on the front lawn. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your votes.